Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's broadcast from the Marin Symphony. As part of our ongoing series of profiles of members of the orchestra, it's my great pleasure to welcome a member of the viola section for quite a number of years now, uh, my colleague Meg Eldridge. Hi, Meg. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Um, now, how long have you been in the Marin Symphony? For one? You know, I... I knew you were going to ask me that question. <laughs> Predictable, I, I know. But I was running in the hills this morning. I was thinking, oh, they're going to ask me how long I've been in it, and I, I couldn't make myself count the years. Actually, <laughs> you know, you know, I don't know if you have this feeling, but you go through your life and you're kind of a young person for a while, and then suddenly people start commenting on, "Wow, you've been in this a long time," and then, yeah. you're like, oh my gosh, I think I'm an old person. Um, but I never. I know what you, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. So I won't. I won't hold it to nice. Let's say that you're no, the. the that you've, in, you've had the benefit of experience over the years. I've grown up in Marin. I was born in Marin, and I went through the youth orchestra programs. Uh, I studied viola in, in public schools. A fantastic music program in the public schools, and then I got into the. Uh, it was called Workshop for Strings back then, uh, before it was Crescendo, and then. Um, and then Marin Youth Orchestra and Orchestra Piccola, which was a, a string group. So I, uh, <clears throat> I believe, you know, they went to Italy and I got in it after that. Uh, and I remember just worshiping all the people that went to Italy. They just thought they were so amazing and yeah, so wanted to be them. So uh, I got to go with the, the orchestra, with the Marin Youth Orchestra to Vienna. So that was- Wow, fun. that must have been phenomenal. I mean, of all cities to, to go to with an orchestra Vienna, um, I've been there too as well. It's a, it's a pretty special place. And it was what was so wonderful for me was to just see how much the people loved the the music, and not to say they don't love it here, but but it's just so it's so much a part of their culture, and you know, and the history is right there. I mean, there's Haydn's apartment and Mozart's apartment, and um, it's just part of the furniture to a, an, an amazing degree. I mean, it's just it's just everywhere you look, it's in the water supply practically. And you know, they, 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 in Vienna, they eat, breathe, and sleep um, classical music. Mozart candies. Oh right, the Mozart Kugel. Is that what they're called That's or Kugel. something? I, would... I think I think I had them once. It weren't particularly tasty, if, if I remember. But, well, but know, they look I nice. Young. I was young and I just yeah. loved them. And I, I remember coming back and also, you know, lattes and cappuccinos hadn't really hit here. And I was so spoiled. I Did said, you have the um, chocolate cake with schlagsahne, everything with whipped cream, right? Yeah. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. Let's not talk about whipped cream. Yes, Let's talk about I, 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 oh. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, and then I go just ahead. remember, uh, I remember we, we t gave a concert on the Danube and Hugo Rinaldi, the, our wonderful conductor, was really upset because a lot of the members of the youth orchestra had been discovering the beer in the vending machines. <laughs> of course they had. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it on tour every time. Yeah. And they probably weren't discreet about it. That's the thing. They probably could have gotten away with it. Everyone was a little sleepy, I think. Yeah, yeah. No, I was going to ask you because I, I generally um, I'm curious uh, when I'm talking to viola players. Did you did you start out on viola or did you make what we call you know the switch? And did you start out on violin? And, and if there was was there a decision there? I started out on viola. I started out on viola uh -huh. because my uncle only through marriage, my ex uncle in law was Lucian Mitchell who was the principal viola of Marin Symphony back then. And he also played in the San Francisco Symphony. And I didn't really know that. So the week I came home and told my parents that I'd passed a musical uh, aptitude test and I was offered the chance to play violin, viola, or cello, uh, my mother didn't want me to play the cello because she thought it was too big. And then I, but I didn't know what the viola was. And I thought that was cool. And I was the only person who would do that, who was going to play that. So that's why I chose it. And then it turned out that I, actually I had an uncle who, who was a violist. So I took lessons with him. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's, that's not the typical way. Usually, usually, I mean, I think, would you say that the, at least the majority, if not the large majority of your colleagues do start out on violin and then for whatever reason, you know, I mean, obviously you have to, the reach is bigger on the viola, right? So not everybody, if you have really, I'm assuming if you have really small hands, it just doesn't fit so yeah, well. Yeah, and it's heavier and all that, but violin, you know, you have the, uh, you can, the foundation of technique can be better, but 
I actually took up violin later uh, on because I fell in love with Baroque violin. And I really, wow. I just went, oh, I, but I, I want to study Baroque uh, playing practice and uh, I got to play violin because there's so much great work for violin. So I, I went into it backward. And then I thought, oh gosh, now I need a modern violin because I can teach violin. And I, and I was, people were calling me to play violin and things, so. Let's talk a little bit about that whole period um, performance practice that you just alluded to, because I think our, some of our listeners may not be quite familiar necessarily with, with what you're talking about or what, what does period performance mean, um, at least to you? Right. Uh, well, I, you know, I, I'd heard of Philharmonia Baroque and I, I didn't know what to make of it. And I think my assumption was, oh, it's all these people playing on gut strings and with no vibrato and oh, that sounds so sort of awful. And but then uh, I, I play in the Carmel Bach Festival and I uh, we were a modern orchestra and really wonderful, wonderful orchestra. And then they got a new conductor and they got a new concert master, Elizabeth Walfish. And she was a Baroque violin specialist. And she um, she gave us, she was, I was just astounded by her playing. I just, I was in love with how free she sounded and um, um, improvisational she sounded and how she just had this um, magnitude, uh, this chemistry on stage that, you know, her rehearsals with her were a little bit chaotic and, wild and then we go on stage and we were all terrified because we felt as though we didn't we really didn't know what on earth we were doing but they were electric and it just it was really fun so she gave us she actually put on master classes uh for all the modern players there and we 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 got over our terror that maybe it was their chance to fire us and we played for her and she handed us baroque bows and and the audiences were into it and it, it was really so it was really fun so what would you say um, would be the two or three most different uh, uh, aspects of, of what we call period performance practice, which is really just to say the best guess that we can come up with in the 21st century as to how people in Bach's or Handel's or in Mozart's time would have played their instruments. Uh, what are the three main differences that come out of playing uh, on either period instruments or using uh, uh, a period bow um, compared to the modern counterparts. Right, right. Uh, well, one one element is that you're really you really need to study the score and you need to know what's what's going on in the bass line and it's not just your part and uh, what else is happening and what if you're playing with a singer what scene what words are you depic depicting what scene are you creating and uh what kind of mood are you setting and with the with a baroque bow i'm sorry i don't have one near me but the um it's it's a shorter bow and it's very light and you 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 hold the bow you choke up on it according to the weight of the bow so some of the really tiny dagger like bows from from italy uh, you actually hold down at the bottom of the bow, but the the bottom of the bow is heavier, and you that uh, that um, you move it slower, and you it kind of uh, leans into the downbeats, and then the up bows are lighter, so it creates a sort, it's of, sort of different shape as well, isn't it? That's one of yeah. the biggest things that the modern bow is. Uh, is it convex or concave? I was terrible in math. Concave. One or the other. Concave, and the baroque bow is convex, mm -hmm. which is how, how does that? How does that translate? I mean, was that, does that mean that you just have to use a different speed or play in a different part of the bow to, to get different articulations? Well, the, 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 um, the invention of the, the modern bow, the convex shape, um, and with more weight at the tip of the bow and more weight in the frog allows you to have an even sound and, and power at the tip, even though that's a, that's a different sounding stroke here. We do all these various techniques techniques at the tip but it's a, you can create a much more even sound and it produces a bigger sound because it's a it's a heavier bow and there's more hair and the convex the convex bow now I'm kidding uh, has less hair and you can't it's not it's harder to sustain a long tone that it's we well, uh, yeah That's and presumably that that yeah and it, I, I'm guessing um, I'm just guessing here that 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 
the convex bow was developed because things were getting louder and bigger during the 19th century. Um, and so, and also the idea of a more sustained line was getting into musical thought in the Romantic era. Whereas with Baroque music, there's a lot of decay. You were talking about that a second ago, right? You, you make an attack and it goes whoosh. Mm -hmm. And I think that they, they were always trying to figure out how to make things louder. You know, the, the cello didn't start being becoming a virtuoso instrument until they figured out how to make metal wrapped strings. Because the, the cello just had these, the, the bigger, the, the thicker the gut, the sort of tubbier the string was. So when they could wrap the strings in metal, it made for a, a more punch to the sound. So it's, it's interesting, it's, interesting stuff. Yeah, and it okay, total, total, total um, uh, change in, in the road. Uh, you mentioned that you just at the beginning you were coming off a run this morning. Is that is that something you do for fun every day? Is that a, a regular thing? I never really do anything every day. It's kind of my thing. I I, I like to get around and uh, I live in Lucas Valley, so there's wonderful, wonderful hills and trails, and I've grown up running on them and. I like, people go, you still run? And I, I don't know how it is that I can, but I do. And um, I, I also like to hike and backpack and mountain climb and play tennis. And I are there parts of Marin County that, yeah. huh? so, well, just are there parts of Marin County that I, either are favorites for you for hiking or parts that you still haven't explored? Oh, oh wow. Uh, yes. Um, Mount Tam is wonderful, of course, uh, and and speaking of parts of it I haven't explored, I've run into some people who are members of the Sierra Club and they love to go off trail and they know all these sort of secret trails that connect in and so I, I'm constantly amazed at how, how still there's so many places I haven't seen. There's a beach called Sculpture Beach I just discovered on some trek and you have to go out at a minus tide and it's it's off point rays. What's a minus tide? A minus tide is a, the lowest possible tide so that it's, it, it, it's, uh, shows all these incredible rock formations and, uh, caves and things you would never see when the water's in. And you have to really time it because then when the water starts coming in and you're way out there, it's not so good. Yeah. But, yeah. So out point rays and it's, um, pretty magical place. Marin County. There are so many places, you know, and I, I think we, we're all guilty of not knowing enough of what's on our back doorstep, no matter where we live. And I mean, there's just umpteen sites of such extraordinary beauty all the way across and up and down Marin County. Just seems like you'd never be able to run out. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I've been fortunate uh, to live in many, many parts of Marin. I think in my in my 20s, I, I, I moved every year or so. Uh, and I, I had this brief stint of living in Bolinas, which proved to be sort of horrible because I was also still going to the San Francisco Conservatory, but I just had to move to Bolinas. And I rode horses and, uh, but the community- Did you really? Yeah, I, I got, I thought, I signed up with this lady to take horseback riding lessons. And then we became really good friends and she would train people's horses. So we would ride them up in the hills above Inverness and down the coast and we'd swim them in this lake, Bass Lake. Oh, so that sounds great. heavenly. Yeah, it was great. And then I'd have, and then my car was always, I had a little Fiat sports car that was always breaking down and I had to get to San Francisco. It was pretty funny. It's beautiful. The residents of Bolinas knew to help me with my car. So it was quite a community. <laughs> Meg, it's so great to talk to you. I'm, I'm, I really appreciate you spending the time um, and get, finding out a little bit more about yourself. And uh, and thank you for the for the the lesson on um, Baroque performance practice. I think that's that's helpful for me. I, and yeah, I wish I'd had know. my bows here because they're they're really fun. One, you can't just have one. You have to, there, there's so many different bows that it's really exciting. Is that something you come back to? I mean, this is a this is, sounds like a a, a really lazy question, but uh, is is there a particular type of music that you gravitate towards to in terms of time period, or are you just happy all over the map? Oh, I'm happy all over the map, and i I love the, the I love the historical performance uh, aspect of playing uh, pieces like Beethoven and 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 Mozart. Uh, just the 
like, gosh, maybe they used open strings here. Maybe they just let the music breathe here. Um, I really love the music by um, Bieber. And he wrote some violin sonatas that each um, station of the cross has a different tuning for the violin that had a different mood um, for the, the, the scene. And it, it, it pretty incredible. I think I've heard those those pieces and right. yeah, they're right, right. No, those are, and he was a precursor to Bach, right? I think mm -hmm. uh, the generation before, perhaps. So, yeah, and he yeah. wrote a, one of his. There's a solo work of Pasacalia that's got a. It's really just that's what I've heard. That's one that I've heard. My uh, my friend Alexi Kenny, who's a phenomenal young violinist, um, does a mean performance of that. He's oh. probably on YouTube. Actually, you want to check that out? Oh, I will look at it. I'm writing it down right here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Meg, it's so good to see you. It was lovely to make music with you uh, at our video capture project uh, the really other day. Fun. And yeah, absolutely. And and of course, can't wait to see you um, uh, back in the hall in the in the fall, and uh, um, if not before. So thank you so much for spending the time with us today. Really, really appreciate it. Good. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.